We got a few content creators here with us, including myself, Pershing, Wolfpack. Uh, oh, welcome, Mav. And Durag. I want to welcome you guys to our first game. It is beta, and so expect some bugs and stuff like that and server crashes. We haven't gotten crashed yet, so that's pretty good so far. Right, Jerkle? Yeah, this is pretty long session compared to the yeah. past few we've tried. <laughs> hasn't pooped yep. itself yet. It hasn't pooped. But in case if it happens, just breathe and then we'll come back and yep. um, all that. So we'll, we'll talk about comms and stuff later, but I do want to go through some kind of basic CQB coverage like really quickly. But before I go through in depth, does everyone know basic knowledge of CQB tactics? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like everyone has run through like what to do in a T-shape hall. Mm -hmm. Cross coverage. Yep. Cross coverage. Split. All right. I guess I don't have to do that much. Yeah. Yeah, I guess just to make things simplified, the first man who has more situation awareness will make the calls on doors and stuff. So just make sure whoever has the most situational awareness will kind of communicate in terms of what to do, like whether to breach or how to breach and all that stuff. We try to keep things a little simplified, so whoever's breaching will always be in the doorknob side of things, just to keep things simple and straightforward. And if we're all stacking on one side, then the first man will be the breacher and then the go in. And first man will always be either going left or right, but I'll right, to cover. Do you want to go over like how we're going to do like call signs and squad designations? Yeah, yeah, I'll go through that in a bit. I have a question oh. about what you you just said with breaching one yep. man breaches does he go to the back of the stack to clack it off so that two man can cover because he's going to have the clacker so out. so you're talking about if we're all stacking one side breaching right not, yeah yeah wait wait wait, wait, um, wait. so yeah, breaching yeah. just to clarify for everyone he's not talking about using a breaching charge just anytime we pass through a breach right true yeah. thanks yes okay. yes so if first man says okay let's get a flash or let's get a charge up then basically they'll put the charge and then i don't know i'm assuming they're going to be last they're going to go back and stack once the charge is executed then the first man will go in does that make sense in hallways and tunnels and stuff like that, just try to keep in the same side of the wall or like just stagger it, earn your shots. So if you're first in the line, just make sure you're looking straight. Second man, look to the two o'clock or your 10 o'clock. If you're lost, you can take a look at Discord's CQB Tactical Guide sub-channel text. I know some pictures are missing, which I don't know why they're missing, but that's kind of the language that we use. Crossing, pieing, hooking. Um, bailing, what else? bail. Yeah, bailing. Yeah, if you need a bail, just let us know. Go on the back. You're going to reset back and the stack. What's new, Fluff? Bailing. That's new for me. You, you want to demonstrate that, Ben? Yeah, yeah should we we'll demonstrate. Up? You guys can come in here. Okay, so he's going to like pie this door. He's going to see what's going on in there. And let's say he suddenly takes fire. If I had been hugging up to him like this, as he's moving, he's pieing, I'm right up on him as second man. If he runs into trouble, he can't do much. He should be able to fall back to where he was, but I've taken up that space. So the idea is he gets shot at and he yells bail or something like that. I've just killed him. I mean, I'm right there up in his space. So the idea is I stay back here. When he's pieing that door, I give him breathing room for bailing. And then let's say he does. Bail. He may yeah, also bail. say, yeah, see, there we go. And he's got room to get out of there. But I'm not going to move up necessarily. We take things slowly. We assess the situation. Now, if he says bail, take it. Or, you know, something like bail, push them. If he's giving me the indication that I need to go, we're going to swap. When he bails, I'm going to immediately come up and take that corner while he falls away. So typically you're not gonna bail unless you've actually taken a shot. That's something we do more in ready or not, like if you need to put on a tourniquet. This game doesn't have any medical or armor in, in, in place yet, so maybe you take a hit, you don't wanna take point anymore. You know, it's just a little more risky to have you at the front. So yeah, the whole concept of bail, whenever you're stacked up, give the guy who's up front, give the point man who's checking a, a dangerous angle that we haven't seen yet, give him room to get out in case he needs to. Cool, makes sense. Gotcha. Cool. Any questions or anything that you guys want to go through real quickly, just to warm up or... Can you guys do uh, one man takes right away? Like one man, one takes, man, take. one man, one man takes, takes right, right away? away. Like, he just goes, he doesn't yep. always button hook, he just takes whatever side he wants, two man goes yes. to the other side. Yeah. First man is always correct. We, we sometimes, in a few sessions, we have actually had uh, matches where we get kind of hung up on doorways because someone will kind of explain what they're going to be doing in the room, but like you're saying, there's really no need to communicate it. Somebody moves in, they go in a direction, and the next guy, he picks the other direction. I mean, it's just, yeah. and we alternate down the stack, keeps it yeah, nice I'll, alternate. Yeah. You, alternate. Yeah. Uh, you the switch as well? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah. yeah is, is everyone familiar switch. with uh, yeah, everyone. everyone familiar with switches, button hook, that kind of stuff? I mean, you guys can go up there if you want. The catwalk will be easier. Oh, that's true. So normally, this? if like this is an actual house, like I wouldn't be on the door side. Like 
on the doorknob side because I'm going to expose myself in this hallway. So ideally, I would be behind, who is it, Jericho. But for the yeah. sake of the demonstration, we'll just show it how the techniques and stuff. Yeah, so. the short and sweet of that would be don't split the stack unless the other stack is big enough to have someone watching his six. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, we, uh, strong wall. We need, uh, we'll go through that in a bit. Let's just button hook this room then. Roger that. Your first man All up. Right, so I'll on my go. Ready? Yep. I'm a gangly terrorist. Oh, <laughs> all right tango down yep. so that's button hook so you're hooking to your side very easy yeah. gotcha right. and typically a button hook inside a room is not gonna look that different from strong wall or even just the way the stack moves in that's really more of a uh, tactic i would say for what like t junctions that kind of thing like you come to a t-shaped hallway you want to button hook that usually before you've button hooked you're each across the hall watching your friend's angle like you're looking past him into the hallway like and when you hook it's that simultaneous motion where both of you fan into the hallway and aim down the hall so you guys uh, like a muzzle nod before you do the switch a muzzle mm -hmm. nod hmm. but some guys will nod to each other with the muzzle of their gun and then switch to hmm. the other side it seems to be pretty effective so you don't have to use words yeah that's something we need to practice more of okay. yeah, you can, yeah, you can yeah. That with your fire team that's sort of thing talk about that stuff yeah yep all right let's demonstrate the uh crossing i forget the term for yeah, it just crossing. Cross. Yeah, cr yeah 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 crossing yep all right so okay. on you when you when you swing this door all right crossing The idea of the crossing is basically just the idea that you're just going to punch in straight. The angle that you had on the door, you're just going to maintain. So yeah. if I'm on the left of the door, I'm going to run into the right of the room, and he's going to be right behind me, moving yeah. into that left. So if you're first man, or like the first one to go left or right, try to go into the deep corners of the room, so that your second, third man can trickle in easily, oh. so you're not punching We're up. Are talking about strong walling? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Like, the okay. corners of the room. Yeah. Corners, yes. Yeah. No, but, I'm don't, confused. but technically, this would be a corner, because the table. But yeah, we'll, we'll demonstrate a strong wall i think we can get we uh, need a few people with us three or yeah, four got, people to do that. Or, yeah, like we people got, we got some people down here so okay let's strong wall this wall from this room oh we're gonna come out of the room yeah like all right strong wall just for the purpose of demonstration so strong wall is pretty straightforward we're gonna be lining up on the wall essentially we're trying to get as much weapons down the range yeah so an open area like this usually we could split the stack so maybe we'll have two of us on yeah. the doorknob side so i'll be on the doorknob okay all right so we're gonna strong wall right stack you're gonna stack on the right and left stack we're gonna stack on the left Copy. all right moving so first man is always gonna go into the corner maybe give me some space uh yep there you, go. there you go. So that's basically a strong wall. So trying to get as much weapons down range in a yeah. open area. The idea is in an irregularly shaped room, there's going to be several corners, you know, obstacles in the room. And if you're the first one through the door, you're going to take the farthest corner you can. And the next guy behind you is going to stop at like the next spot, the next corner. This is a flat wall. There really isn't anything. And so yeah. the only thing Pershing could really do was find a good space in between and stop. The whole point of strong walling also is when we all come in with our backs to the walls, looking in generally the same direction, it really reduces your chances of blue on blue and nobody over penetrates you're not going to get shot from behind like we can all see what's happening in the room it's and usually always, used as well for like really large rooms as you navigate yep. through very the, large yeah rooms. you just pick it, like yeah. left as your strong yeah. wall and you move yeah. across and we'll have less of that in ground branch because right. like big open maps and that sort of thing but like for uh, some like especially as we push into depot and that sort of thing that well, stuff yeah happens, right? but yeah if we're doing docks strong, the warehouse is there yeah strong yeah. wall will be useful when we're going to be moving up so line formation is essentially having everyone all guns basically in the horizontal to line yeah Fine and line. fine line and then when we say let's move up we'll move up in the line that's when you move up in the line i think line and probably wedge are probably the more common formations that we'll use in open areas like in woods so when we're moving in woods we don't want to move in a bunch of a, like a blob but we want to move like probably perhaps like a tactical line having five meters apart from each other or something like that or 10. this is just basic formations for when we're maneuvering through woods and open area does that make sense yeah yeah okay yep go ahead Bruce. yeah so just something that fans always told me and everyone else that's really useful advice uh, just avoid target fixation and what i mean by that is let's say if we're in a line formation or we're clearing a building whatever that situation may be especially if an enemy is shooting at a certain part of that building or you hear something try not to avoid covering an angle when half the team is already covering the other angle a lot of the times i do see this where as soon as something happens we all try to turn our attention leaving ourselves exposed on one side so just make sure you if you don't have work you know find work as fan has always said to me you know find another angle that no one else is i would say that but yeah he's our in-person cop guy yeah okay, yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a hard that's one real. to do <laughs> yeah. there's a hard one to do because we have to trust each other like if i know a yeah. guy's been watching that door i have to believe he's still watching it and i have to let him work that door. Uh, just just use your tab you know move your head yeah. just to kind of quick glance 
stance. You know, you don't have to move your entire body. So yeah, just utilize that, I guess. You ready um, to get going? Yeah, you guys are all yeah, good. You guys in. feel confident? Right, we're gonna start with seven I, I let's seven. Get rowdy. And I'll I'll go. Over do we want uh, wait, wait uh, do you do you want to talk about how we're gonna split our yeah. Game comp? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well. Before? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do a little ditty that we used to do back in the days of six two six. But what it is is that we're gonna be splitting into three different fire teams. We have eleven people. So at least for starters, we're gonna do one team of four, one team of four, and one team of three. Your fire teams will be in individual Discord channels. That's I'm gonna be channels more, down there. Yep. There's temp channels that we'll just join, and you guys can sort yourselves out. For easiestness, I'll just assign that sort of thing if that's all right with everyone. Good. Those are gonna be our quote unquote proxy channels. You'll be able to communicate with members of your team. Each team is gonna have a fire team leader. They're gonna be the guys to call in the shots, coordinating everything else like that. The FTLs, they have radio rights, so they can use the in-game radio to communicate with the other teams. One of the FTLs is gonna be the overall CO. They're gonna be coordinating all the fire teams, just calling out any major decisions, but usually the fire team is gonna be pretty independent. For the first mission, I'm gonna be the CO, just to get you all used to that. Then I'll pass off the CO role to anyone else, but do I have any volunteers for fire team leads? I just need two more. I mean I got volunteer. I think Pershing right. wants to be one. Pershing's one. Anyone else have any strong desire? Because if not, I'll just pick someone at random. I could. All right, there. Oh, okay, uh, so we'll Tacti's do... Tacti's joining, by the way. Ta hey, Tacti. Hey, Tacti. So if Tacti's here, we're going to have four teams of four. Although, actually, for 747, I'm going to want one team of five, one team of four, and one team of three. So I'll be one team lead, and I'll be CO for the first stop. Pershing's one. Anyone else? Did someone say they want to be the final TL? I volunteered Jericho. All right. Uh, volunteer me. Uh, Jericho. <laughs> All right, Jericho, Jericho it is. <laughs> All right, it's um, for ease of organization, does anyone want to have a big gun for 747? I need two people. Uh, I Is have an long FAL guns? already. Long, long gun, like like sniper rifle, de like uh, long range. Right, I think Fluff Dares, is really good at that. Dares and Fluff. Fluff, are you with me? Yeah, I can take a 24. All right, um, me, Fluff, and who was the third, who was the final one? Drew. Dares, sorry. Dares, all right. Me, Fluff, and Dares are going to be Charlie team. Also, all of y'all hit escape. You see how you can set your team element? Set no. the team element to the squad that I'm assigned. So me, Fluff, and Ooh. Dares are going to be Charlie. Also, on your helmets, you should put Charlie tabs on e either side of your head. Oh, bravo. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's yeah, sick. yeah. All right. So me, Fluff, and Dares are going to be Charlie. Um... Hey, Tacti, let me reiterate everything for a third time. Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Can, no, no, you're good. So we got 12 people. So we're going to start with 747 just to get people used to the way we're going to do this. We're splitting into uh, three different fire teams. One team of five, one team of four, one team of three. Each fire team is going to be in its own Discord channel for communication purposes. That's going to be their proxy chat. Each fire team will have a fire team leader, an FTL. Right now it's me, Jericho, and Pershing. The FTLs will have radio rights, so they'll use the in-game radio to communicate and calm with other people. One of the FTLs is also going to be the overall CO just commanding officer. I'm going to take that for the first one, but I'm happy to pass that off to anyone who wants it afterwards once we get to the feel of it. I've got one team formed already. Pershing, are you feeling like clearing the plane or are you feeling like clearing terminal? You can clear the plane. Sure. All right. Pershing is in charge of the team of four. For the ease, that's going to be Maverick, Durag, and Fan. If all of y'all can set your designations to Bravo, and then Jericho, you're in charge of then everyone else who I forget. So that's <laughs> Wolfpack, Tacti, Space Ghost, and one other person. Is it Durag? Yeah. Okay. So let's make sure to get the sides of your helmets with your corresponding squad designation with the patches. Jericho, you're in charge of Alpha Fire yep. Team. Pershing, you're in charge of Bravo, and I'm running Charlie. One once you've got all of your patches set up, Jericho, can you load up Intel Retrieval on 747 with a bunch of enemies and a bunch of potential Intel sites? Okay, so it's Fluff going. made a very good point in the text chat while all this was happening, and that was that once you have selected your team element, you want to customize your operator, and there should be a checkbox. You know where you can set that three-letter call sign? Use that checkbox to make your call sign standard, and that'll make you like Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Bravo yeah. 1, Bravo 2, and that way we can all have good standardized one. call signs. Um, that works for me. Yep. It's not, it's not working for the alphas. It's weird. Oh, is it not? Uh, Jericho, maybe try selecting and unselecting it, because maybe it'll stuck on A for you. There's yeah, another guess, weapons yeah. bench across the street, by the way. We don't have a crowd there. <laughs> so we're just picking patches that are just, just picking C team? Yeah, so on the two sides, on the left and right of your helmet, put whatever squad you're in. So yeah, if there's, if you hit escape, you can see the session roster, and then that little A next to you, if you highlight over it, you can change it to a C. So we've got four, four. Okay, so that all works for now. Once everyone's set up, we can split into our separate Discord channels, and I'll explain the op over radio in the lobby. So this is, we're just doing PvE at this point, is what it sounds like, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, 
only yep. doing PvE for right now. Well, um, we're doing so a warm up in seven four seven with yeah. the whole team, so we can get cohesion. So going. if just, you are in the alpha element, you're gonna have to manually set your call sign. So I'm A dash one, and you guys will just have to figure out amongst yourselves which alpha you are. So am I allowed to be C four even though there isn't a third person? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck was that? I mean, I, nothing, I knew that joke would come up at some point. Yeah, I know. No, no, nothing. Nothing stopping you. I don't. I don't mind. So. Stop causing violence. Hey, actually, yeah, once once you've got your patches all set, just exit the warehouse, go outside. You can have visual confirmation when everyone's set. So, Denver, quick question for you. Yeah. So, let's say we're clearing the plane. Yeah. And besides the radio to other squads, mm -hmm. let's say I'm addressing my other team members. Would yeah. I address them by the patch I see on there, like 1-1 one, one or whatever it says? It's call sign or by name. Or, or by name. Like, we're not, we're not, yeah, we're not going, like, uber, uber milsim. So, if you want to just, like, say, hey, Jericho, hey, fan, that sort of thing, like, just yeah, do that that's cool. for, ease, for yeah. ease of access. But yeah, so... No, you call um, me sergeant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, we, <laughs> we're not... This is just a loose framework. Like, I'm saying, like, how it's going to go, but, like, it can... We can play this as seriously or as not seriously as you want. Like, I'm just trying to build a framework framework that we can work around because coordinating like 12 people in one ground bridge game all in the same channel is difficult and since voice isn't functioning too well right now it's just easier to do this yeah discord we're just support. that's why we're using discord because yeah it, no it's yeah unfortunate. If, in yeah. a perfect world i'd just say everything over everything in voice uh -huh. and just keep eye. okay let's keep grenade let's keep grenades throws to a minimum all right yeah <laughs> also when when we're in mission oh. if you throw a nade just call out that you've tossed it um, yeah, yeah, nade so out. Everyone, okay. yeah so everyone's got their patches set except for yeah we're waiting on tacti but yeah so once once tacti's all set that we right. should be good to Bravo, head in. form up on me. Alpha team, you are going to be spawning hopefully main gate. I don't know if we can guarantee that, but your MO will be to clear out the terminal and the fuel depot and search for any intel sites that are there. So I'd suggest like mid-range weapon, red dot as well as a potentially optic scope G33 would be good. Um yep. Bravo team, who's plane clear, you're going to be spawning in the hills with Overwatch team, which is my team, Charlie Squad. Mm. We're gonna clear the tarmac for you and you all are gonna push mm. up into the plane search for intel, neutralize any contacts, and then work to support the main gate team potentially clearing the hangar building as well. So bring like close range weapons, SMGs, like low optics, maybe a G33 for any potential mid to long range engagements, but you're generally keeping it kind of close. So if you want to set up your weapon, do that now and then charlie team is overwatch team we're also spawning in the hills our job is basically just gonna be to clear the tarmac and any bad guys that we see from range just shoot it so bring long guns big scopes that sort of thing if you all want to just get your kit set up right now you can do that and i think fans said our standard cam is going to just be multi-cam yeah multi-cam so, so if y'all want to yeah, if wanna, yeah. Uh, are we going day or night i say day right now this is like a get used to it sort of thing so like i'm sure we can do night ops eventually but let's just try to get the mechanics down and how how we all feel about like using the discords and everything else like that. FTL should always bleed as much as it'd be fun to lead from the front, FTL should generally lead from the rear. They should not be the breachers. They should not be the people pushing yep. in the door first. But if your FTL goes down, just decide amongst yourselves, communicate, all teams be advised, FTL, the alpha team lead is down, tell us what to do next. If you've only lost one or two members, continue your tasking. But if, for example, let's say alpha team's pushing the terminal or in the fuel depot, and then they get ambushed and they're down to like two men from their original five, at that point, it'd be best for you to fall back and try to regroup with either Overwatch team or the plane team. That's where the dynamics come in because depending on how the outcome goes, we will uh, evolve like the plan as it goes in. So like if a team gets wiped or if something happens that will move to cover and just keep optimizing the plan for that sort of thing. So just keep in communication. If your FTL goes down, just appoint someone else to run the radio. In-game comm de by default is B. It should be hold. So that should be fine. There is some bugs with audio issues right now. So if someone doesn't have in-game comms, just try to find someone who does. I'm pretty sure there's at least everyone in the fire team yeah. who has checked, who has working comms. So that that should be fine. And like we can run 747 a couple times just to give people a feel for things. Also, if you want to do different roles, we can play with new maps. The reason I just suggested starting with 747 that over and over again to train people in a ground bench server used to be a part of. So it's just something that's like easy and just like people can get pick it up real quick. And then once we've got that down, we can go to like the newer maps like docks, the new depot, everything else, and use that stuff that we figured out here to like real proper to do some real proper fun stuff. All right, is everyone ready to move to a different map? Nobody's in a in a kit editor or uh, just a quick question though. There's oh, no yeah. um for long range scopes, there's no like mil specs or uh, like range adjustments, right? No. Uh, no. Yeah, no. No, I think, we can't I think do there anything is... to adjust. 
I think there is, is there? bullet drop, though. There is bullet, bullet drop. drop. You yeah, cannot yeah, adjust, you can't set the range on your scope, so you'll have to use a rangefinder, and you'll have to actually use the mill dots. Like, if you're using the Mark IV, I like it. It's very clean. Just kinda... Yeah, so it's just a manual kind of... Yeah. You got a manual view on your scope, you can't adjust it. Got it. All right, everyone has exited the warehouse, so I think we're good to swap maps. Once Tacti gets in, we'll do one final mission brief, and then we'll load in and split up the, to the Discord channels.